What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn all about charts specifically in Swift UI. So here are the three charts. We've got a line, bar, and pie chart. Not only do they look beautiful in both light mode and dark mode, but they're actually interactive. So if I tap and drag uh, horizontally across this line chart, we can see that we can actually get the values of each of the points. Same deal for the bar chart. The difference is we can also drag this bottom thing so we can see the label associated with each bar. And of course, we can also do it for this pie chart. What I really like about the pie chart is that the piece kind of pops out. So not only uh, does the number change, but it just looks kind of cool too. And we'll also talk about how to customize all the styles and all that good stuff too. So make sure to smash that like button as per usual. Hit subscribe while you're at it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do Swift, Swift UI, a bunch of iOS videos. Join the party, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some charts in Swift UI. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template. Let's go ahead and call this charts in Swift UI. Make sure your language, of course, is Swift and your uh, interface and your lifecycle are both Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. Save it wherever you'd like. And first things first, some housekeeping. Let's close this right panel. We don't need it. We're also not going to use the preview, so go ahead and close that. Let me expand the window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's also select the 12 Pro Max from our simulator list. Hit that run button to make sure it builds and boots up in the simulator here, and we are good to go. So the first thing we wanna do before we dig into writing our code is bring in the dependency that's gonna allow us to create these charts. So we're gonna to go to File, Swift Packages, and Add, and we wanna paste in the URL for the GitHub repo uh, called, I believe it's called Swift UI Charts, and we'll stick with the latest version here. I'll have this link down below. Go ahead and continue and it'll resolve the dependency. And once it resolves it, you'll see it brought into your project like so. Head back to your content view. And in here, we wanna start in our code by importing Swift UI charts. So nice and simple. All right, let's get to the actual chart creation. So we're gonna be creating a variety of charts. So go ahead and create a VStack. And in here, we're gonna do a line chart, a bar chart, and we're also gonna do everyone's favorite, not actually a pie chart. So let's do a line chart by creating a line chart view. And we're gonna stick with the one, the constructor with only two minimum parameters, which is data, which is a array of doubles and a title. Let's call this line chart. And let's put some values in here. So let's go with 22. Let's go with some smaller values now. Let's go bigger and that should be sufficient. And let's see, before we actually hit run, let's add a spacer between all of these. So we're gonna add a spacer here. We're also gonna want one below it. And let's go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. Let's see what that looks like. So we should see our line chart. All right, there we have it. There is our line chart. If you hit Command Shift A to go to dark mode, you'll see that it also does look good in dark mode. Uh, it's supposed to be filled in that way. If you actually go ahead and hit Command R one more time, it'll remain that way. Now, one thing I'll mention is that you can pass in something in here called style, which is a chart style. And if you open up the constructor, you'll see you can pass in a whole host of things in here, things like background color, accent color, uh, a gradient, text color, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm not gonna fill all of these out because none of them are optional and that would be way too much of your guys' time to waste. So we're gonna be lazy and just leave this parameter out and stick with the default values. So let's go ahead and create the next one, which is a bar chart view. So let's throw in our trusty spacer and right up here, we're gonna create a bar chart view. Once again, with data and title. And you'll notice data in this case is a different object. It's of type chart data. And we'll see in a moment why. So title is just a string, not an array of strings. Let's make that a bar chart. And the data is going to be chart data. Open up the constructor. And there's quite a few options in here. You want to stick with the one that has a uh, array 
in which it has tuples of string and binary integer. So go ahead and create that. And it's a lot simpler than it looks. It basically asks, asks us to give us a title, uh, give it a title for every single bar and a value that's associated with it. And that's all it means. So go ahead and do that, copy and paste it a few times. Let's go ahead and change this to be different months. Uh, let's see, January, February, March, looks like we skipped April because we're on our own schedule. And let's go ahead and change up these values as well. Let's see, we'll go with 22, let's go a little lower and we should be good to go. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And we're in dark mode and still looking good. Now, one thing you'll notice in the bar chart is it actually shows us this first chart is January. But what about our other four bars here? What's cool about both of these charts actually is you can tap and you can drag the bottom uh, little label around, which is more or less the legend of which bar you're on. And not only does it change the value at the top of there, but it also changes the la label here for uh, being kind of reflective of what each bar is. And you can do the same thing up here as well. You can see that uh, you can drag between each of these and it actually shows you uh, this up 14% is calculating based on the values. So based on uh, this kind of interactivity, let's go ahead and do the next chart and let's see what you can do with that. So the next one is gonna be a pie chart view. Once again, takes in data and title. So the doubles in here need to total 100, AKA 100%. If you exceed 100, what it's going to do is the uh, chart calculation is going to add up all of the numbers and derive percentages. In other words, if I do two and two and go ahead and run this, you'll see that it'll be 50% by 50%, just like that. Let's also add a spacer below this so it's not touching the bottom. But let's go ahead and make this uh, pie chart a little more interesting. So let's do some random values. Let's see how it computes it. So let's say 22, 17, 32, 99, 78, um, and let's go with 60, 64. So there's no way I can do that much mental math that fast. So let's go ahead and let's see what that chart looks like. So we clearly have the three larger sections. We can uh, drag or tap and drag around in this and the number changes for the respective value. And what's also cool is the actual piece uh, kind of enlarges, as you can see here, kind of like a pizza. Uh, maybe I'm just saying that because I'm hungry at the moment. But anyways, uh, it is pretty cool. You can switch back to light mode and you can see that these are all really nice looking views. Uh, they're both, uh, all of them are cards and they're also, they've also got this really nice shadow going on here. Now, before we wrap up the video, uh, one thing that I want to call out here is you can actually get the data to animate. I'm not sure if it's apparent that it's already animating, but these are smaller cards. And if you wanted, let's say just one large uh, chart, we'll do line uh, chart as an example. Let's go ahead and comment all that out. We can simply create a line view and it takes the exact same parameters. So what I'm gonna actually do is let's grab this constructor and just paste it right there. Go ahead and continue. And what you'll see is that we get a really cool looking full chart just like that. And this one actually looks a little better in certain use cases because we do have, uh, you know, the Y axis here and the lines going across. And because it's larger, it's easier to see that it's animating and it's a really nice looking chart. So whether you're making a financial app or just want to model some data for whatever type of app you're making, this is super, super nifty, a really minimum amount of code you need to bring in to actually do it. And of course, for those of you that are more intimately familiar with Swift UI, once you hook this up to observable object, things like state, and you have these values changing based on user interaction, all you need to do to have these bars and lines animate is simply pass in different data. So there you have it. That's how you can create different types of charts with Swift UI. This framework is super well written. There's gonna be a new version of it coming out fairly soon. I might do another video once that one drops as well. Don't forget to smash that like button as per usual. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys like Swift UI content. Uh, video suggestions in general are super helpful so I can make things that you guys enjoy watching. And most importantly, hit subscribe while you're at it. Helps grow the channel. I think something like 70% of you guys watch these videos consistently but don't subscribe. 
I'm not sure why, but go ahead and hit that big red button and uh, uh, join the party. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.